Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. We have got a giant, Neil Pogue, I call him the soulful hippie, uh, just won Grammys for Tyler, the creator, from Outcast and way beyond that, this guy is the truth. Uh, we shot him at the very hot Harmon Experiential Center, which you'll see. Stay tuned for that. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, we're just coming off of NAM. We had a fantastic time. A thousand people in two days gave away tons of gifts. If you, in fact, want a prize, watch your inbox. We will be getting that information to you or the manufacturer will whose prize you won. You guys were crazy. We're doing the worm and cartwheeling and twerking and dancing and screaming. We had a ball. We had Manny American, Ricky Reed from Lizzo, 24 Karat Golden, Nick Mack from Electric Field Studios. It was hot, 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 hot. Thanks, Nam. Thanks to all the sponsors who stepped up and really they want to support you and your tools support them back. Go to those companies and support them. It was a great time. A bit of Pensado news. We are announcing, and if you've seen socials, you'll see it. Uh, we are partnering in conjunction with Red Light Management, uh, the largest independent management firm in the world with folks like Dave Matthews and Chris Stapleton and the Mariahs and on and on and on. Uh, we're going to do, we have some plans to do some big things that are going to benefit you. Bruce Floor is our guy. He's their chief strategy officer, and I'm going to be the guy on this end, and we're going to rock some stuff for you. So stay tuned. We're real proud of that. But without further ado, uh, I can't say much about Neil Pogue that hasn't been said. He's a friend. I'm biased. He is super talented. He can do any kind of music. He has his own perspective. He stands by his standards and has been awarded with Grammys and accolades from hither to yon. Enjoy our conversation at the Harmon Experiential Center with the one, the only, the soulful hippie, Neil Pogue. Thank you, thank Neil. you. What up, sir? Hey, guys. What's up, buddy? Good to see you know, you I lovingly call Neil the soul hippie. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that is so fascinating about you is your flexibility, man. There's so many different genres that you have not only mastered, done well, won Grammys with, is that just because your musical taste is that broad? Where does it come from? Yeah, it's from growing up as a kid listening to AM radio and, you know, and uh, just listening to all types of music, you mm -hmm. know. Oh, mm -hmm. I mean, everything. Yeah. So that's you, just me. I absorb it all. So right. it, it just comes natural. You know? And then you also, you know, there are a certain set of folks in the world of, of mixed engineers that are also musicians mm -hmm. right and so yeah. was drumming was that your yeah. your your yeah. path yeah i was a drummer you know mm -hmm. i guess i can say yeah still am but not you know <laughs> but does that yeah. does that capability inform your mixing oh most most definitely really most definitely that i think that was what uh helped me out a lot because being a drummer you're in back of the band and you keep the pulse and you keep the groove and and you have to pay attention to ev everything mm -hmm. so yeah so mm -hmm. that i guess my or using my left and right hands or everything is, you know, so mm -hmm. that definitely helped, you know. Mm. Neil, mm. Uh, back in the day, we used to talk about how you see music in colors. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, I do that a little bit, but mm -hmm. not, not, I don't think not as much as you. Do you think that concept gives you access to not having to worry about genre? And, mm -hmm. and when you don't worry about genre, you can mix it any genre you want right, right, because right. you're working with it intangibles the, mm -hmm. the groove the feel the vibe mm -hmm. do you think that was a part of yeah it? just feeling melody is what's colorful to me you know just yeah. you know mm -hmm. if you listen to the beatles or whoever yeah uh it can be whomever but melody is what just hearing mm -hmm. melody just brings color to my mind yeah and, and, it and helps me out do they and, call that synesthesia herbs that what that's mm -hmm. called? well it depends uh it's colors can be a result of indica or sativa so it just depends on what you I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kidding I think uh, but but what's fascinating about that notion we've had people on where music was in colors some where music was in numbers yeah I had, I've heard about numbers yeah um, I I and, numbers. and but the fascinating thing to me just as an observer is that the ability to take that interpretation and then turn it back into sound mm -hmm. that makes a cohesive story. Yeah, because it turns There's, to a feel, you know. Yeah. You, you feel, I feel the color. Yeah. I, I can't say I smell it, but I feel it. And, mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. what color is, ah, uh, what uh, color is that? Well, that might be 
might Ooh. be kind of greenish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I didn't, you know what? I'm, I'm not even going to respond. Right, to right. That. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, 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 I think you think that was maroon. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no joke. Yeah, he's maroon exactly. two or three or four. Yeah, or right. five. <laughs> like I said, the, the swath of, you know, recently Tyler the Creator, AWOL Nation, mm -hmm. other kinds of things that have just been. Their signature pieces in the way you do them that almost transcend their success. Like they're successful, but they're musical, standalone, standout kind of pieces. Is that yeah. intention or are you just mixing to your happy? Um, it's definitely not in intentional. I mm -hmm. mean, if as far as people coming to, to me, mm -hmm. no, it's not intentional. It's, uh, I call it a, a blessing because it's good to be to mix the, the the cool things yeah things that become legendary stand the test of time and not yeah. just a, a moment or trendy mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. it's to me it's it's a blessing and i love those those types of things mm -hmm. too you know yeah, it's good to be it. it's good to be involved in in new things that you don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. you know some things you know you know you know what artists going to be in you know but but it's great to work on on new artists yeah. and and the un, the unknown to me is is great you know you you have the capacity to work on something I've never heard of, and all of a sudden it becomes a standard mm. almost as much as anybody I know. Mm, you know yeah. People are like, have you heard of A1 Nation? Mm. Neil did this. You heard mm. Tyler, the creator, Neil. And I was like, mm. I knew of Tyler, but when you got your hands on it, and in those circumstances, is this also artist? One of the things that you also have is you have this great capacity to have artists trust you. Mm -hmm. with their material mm -hmm. and does that help you then push the envelope because they they trusted where you're going to go with it yeah i think I, I like to push their envelope too to see yeah. what they will they will allow me to do mm -hmm. you know what i mean see how far they would like to go with it because mm -hmm. some sometimes it's such a reactive thing to me mixing records and you know it talks to you it tells you what to do the next and what what effect or something to put there mm -hmm. so it's it's good to just do it and see what they think you mm -hmm. know sometimes they're like eh, i don't know because sometimes i may but it's fun for for me, so mm -hmm. I I don't mind hitting mute after they tell me no. But at that moment, it was fun for me to to hear it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't end up on on the record, cool, no big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I I tried. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think I don't think. <clears throat> do I think or not, not think? I don't think anyone else could have done the album, Igor, but you. There's mm -hmm. nothing traditional on that record. No, no, that's an I abstract mean, painting like, right like there. <laughs> he, might, he might do a whole song as mm -hmm. a verse or or whatever whatever. Mm -hmm. And um like I said I think you were you were you were put on this earth to do that record because oh, it's it's not like anything else. Oh, I and, appreciate that. Uh, can you share a couple of moments from that that process cuz that record was Yeah, really that record good. it was one of those records where, you know, Talon our Tyler and I spoke at length before we even started mixing about that record mm -hmm. and, and how we wanted to feel and and um and for me like I said a few minutes ago it was an abstract painting and it was an art piece and so really. right so because the if you go back and listen to that album that uh, his lyrics aren't you know up in in the mix sometimes they're low mm -hmm. it just depend on it depended on how we felt at that moment mm -hmm. because the lyrics weren't important mm -hmm. it was more about that the, the whole thing mm -hmm. of just how it felt mm -hmm. you know because sometimes now nowadays you know people want their vocals loud in front of the mix but that record we didn't we didn't want the vocals loud nice you know yeah yeah what really stood out to me on that record was the bridges that, oh, that I've never man, heard Tyler is a bridge fiend and I, I love that because I'm also a bridge fiend just to me too me too just for, it's almost like a flower blooming. As soon as you get yeah. to a bridge, like everything's like, wow, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, he loves bridges. And, and I was so elated that he's he feels bridges that way because he he writes some amazing bridges, mm -hmm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. I always look at the bridges as the time to show off. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's whether, time to take it to a whole other level. Whether showing off or the artist or something, you know, like, yeah. like I recorded artists and, and, and they, you, you, you do a solo, but they won't, they won't do it in the bridge. I'm like, do it in the bridge and show yeah, off, yeah, you know? Yeah, right, right, right. Especially jazz musicians, yes, which I rarely exactly. do, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, man, great work. Oh, thank I'm, you. I'm, I mean, I, I congratulate oh, you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, that. I, I, don't, I couldn't have done that record. Yeah. I, could, and I, I don't have the patience. Yeah. It's one of those records that we didn't know what was going to happen, and, you know, we just knew that it was something that was different. Yeah. And we didn't know how people were going to feel, you know, yeah. and Tyler didn't care either. He just said it was a piece of work he had to he had to do. He had to well, complete, that, you know. You, you just hit on the, a place where I was going to go that I think artists feel with you. Like if it's, 
a seminal moment in their career or they're going to got something that's special that they got to get out or they it becomes more specific whose hands they put it in mm -hmm. and you to me are on you know number one on the short list of that because people go you know if i'm going to go make a statement mm -hmm. i'm going to go to a guy who's going to not only understand it but support it but also contribute to it mm -hmm. you know there's only a few guys yourself josh Goodman, a few folks where the artists and the labels and stuff say what do you think? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that doesn't happen mm -hmm. with every place, in, in particularly in the mixing space. It's good to challenge people too. I mean, that record it challenged yeah. people. It said, "Okay, this is how far we can go." Now, what are, what are you going to do? Exactly, you and, know? It, yeah. and that's the other you know? part that I think is the third part of the equation, mm -hmm. which is you'll put out records that say, "You know, we wanted to do this. Now mm -hmm. you process it." Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. And more often than not, people take on the challenge. And, mm -hmm. you know, once you get a reputation for good, it's like, what's Neil doing next? Right. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's fantastic. In your work process, speaking that we're, we're in Harmon, what did you mix on? Did you mix on some JBLs or? Oh yeah, JBLs, seven oh eight P's. Oh, yeah, yeah. those are my those are my things. Are it's so funny that, that they're called P's. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I, I like that. It's like my last name. Yeah, but uh, yeah, those those seven oh eight P's, man, they're amazing. Um, and, and I also mix off to seven oh five. So, um, it's uh, it's funny how I, I wasn't a JBL fan years ago, but mm -hmm. one day my my friend Damian Curry he brought me here. And sat me in front of it, and I met Becky, mm -hmm. and I was blown away by yeah. him. And so I was like, "Okay, I have to have him." Yeah. And ever since then, I I mix exclusively on those JBLs. Yeah, they are absolutely amazing. What, what I find now, I'm not a mixer, but tell me if I'm. I find that their accuracy, but their muscularity, yeah, are they sort of match, right. and so. I can get all the colors. I can get all the stuff mm -hmm. that makes me feel emotion. But if I want to put a foot in an ass, mm -hmm. they'll put a foot in the ass. Is, right. Is that it's accurate too? I, I love how the accuracy mm. of them, and um, I, I like the 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 base the base response in those things are amazing. Amazing. And, and you're looking around, wondering if there's a sub somewhere. Right. Right. And there's there's no sub. It's just how right. they're just, they're just amazing. Yeah. Really. Really. Yeah. Good. And now, if you don't mind, I'm going to start calling them the seven or eight pogues. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for that. You got moment. your pair of pogues. Yeah, I got right, some right, pogues. Right. <laughs> yeah. Get my own signature. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. How do you deal with uh, personalities? Because we we've worked with some. A lot of to be kind uh, personalities. You know, I think about that very often because I think back when I had a nine to five job when I worked in um, customer service, and hmm. I would have some interesting people come to that window. They're angry about things, you know. Uh, they want you to fix things right on the spot. They don't want you to send it out. They get mad that it took three weeks to get it back. Mm -hmm. And so dealing with different personalities, I always say that that prepared me to deal with people in the music business. That's you amazing. Know? Yeah. What I've always tried to do was, um, was kind of lead into the process of, uh, like you did all the pre, pre, pre production work with, I think mm -hmm. that that's a good spot to where yeah. you can let the client know that, 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 that you're trustworthy and that mm -hmm. and that you're gonna you're gonna do good, but boy, if you lose their trust, it's game oh, yeah. over. Yeah, well, and, I and think always it, after the first mix, after yeah. the first mix, they they will know. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's instructive to the audience to know that that intersection is an intersection of skill, talent, psychology. Mm -hmm. You know administrating stuff, mediation. Mm -hmm. When you have an artist and a manager and a record label and and our people and wives and husbands and family and like you're navigating mm -hmm. fathers in some case and you know or mothers or funders or mm -hmm. there's a lot to navigate yeah i always and call it juggling that's it's exactly like a juggling right. act you know what yeah. I mean? exactly right that's what it is yeah i've always yeah. been a uh at times totally arrogantly encapsulated and completely broken down mm -hmm. Thinking that I'm not any good. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> in the same hour. <laughs> Everybody has their, their method, but, but right? During the down times, I, mm -hmm. I'm more creative, so yeah. I don't I don't worry yeah. about it. Everybody's got their own thing. If, if I had to if I had to describe your music and your mixes, I would say unique. Mm -hmm. Because you always try to be different. Mm, okay. As much as you can, thank you. and yeah. sometimes we can't, you know. Yeah. But you know, I, I, I like that. I like that about your work. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I always try to approach every 
every mix differently. I mean, I, I just like to, I just love for the music to talk to me mm-hmm. rather than, you know, forcing myself, more forcing my style mm-hmm. on something mm-hmm. and which I don't know if I have a style. So maybe that, that's the reason why. Mm-hmm. So when people say, oh, I know your sound. Every time I hear a song, I'm, I always wonder what that is because right. I don't know what it is. So it's, it's, I, I um, think it's they read the credits. That's, yeah. that's what I, really <laughs> well, I was going to say, I think Neil's yeah. signature is that there isn't one. Yeah, you know, I think like so it's, too. it's individual by individual, which yeah. is which is really saying something that it's become something. Mm-hmm. That it's not that yeah. it, it's yeah. a testament to the work. Yeah, I think I think Herb, I think he said it better than us. He he lets the music take you where it wants to go. Yeah, mm-hmm. and most people don't. Um, yeah. You know, and um, you know because you're hired to do something specific, mm-hmm. and you're hired to make sure that you do whatever. Is mm-hmm. called for that you hear and feel, and that's yeah. a that's a very right. it's a very rare They're putting gift. They're the trust in, in me. It's, it's like going on stage every time, you know. It's, it's I mean, I get stage fright just like a singer going on stage. Sure. You're sitting there, you're like, okay, because you don't know, you know. And then when you get to the to the end of it, you're like, ah, oh, sigh, sigh of relief when the when the client loves it, you know. Thank you for making that point because you know I have this conversation a lot with you know, with my with sometimes with the team, but also just the audience in general. Mm-hmm. Nervousness is a good thing. Mm. When you're not nervous, it's a problem. Yeah. It nervousness prepares you. It means something is coming. Mm-hmm. It it turns up your fire. Yeah. And so so forth. So if you're not nervous going into something, you're likely not going to have a good thing. Right. You know, everybody mm-hmm. who performs, all the veterans say, you got to be nervous before you go on stage. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm nervous before a show. I'm not, yeah. and yeah. and that's just you getting ready. That's you. In warming athletics, up. it's the same thing. What's that? Athletics. Oh, it's, it's the, it's the exact thing. same thing. And um. But a lot of people think that that's, you know, not a good thing or, you know, when you're going to be a mm-hmm. veteran, you won't be nervous. No, you, yeah. you, you, are, you want that edge. You want to be tuned right. up. So you heard it from, you know, a Grammy award winner mm-hmm. here. Um, are you a guy who is, it, it doesn't strike me that you use technology. Technology doesn't use you, right? right? Mm-hmm. Do you have go-to things you are or do you stay on top of everything that's coming out? Um, I've never been a guy that has a, a bunch of, you know, a lot of gear. I used to go in Dave's room and they got all this gear. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be amazed by all this gear, but Dave I just, have and, and I'm like, I'm like, or, Dave, do you use all this stuff? That's, that, that's, right. a, you know? that's a total sign of insecurity. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, towers of stuff. If they I'm see like, all that shit, they know I'm going to be good. Uh, I, I didn't know amazed what that stuff did. by that. I'm walking around looking at all these towers and all yeah, this stuff, yeah. but I've never been that guy. I, I, I know, swear I some know. of that stuff wasn't hooked up. You like the lights. As long as you saw something blinking, Thinking, right? Yeah, exactly. good. But no, I was never, I, I had never been the guy that chases a lot of things. I mm-hmm. mean, a lot of things, it's, it's intriguing. Mm-hmm. And of course, right now, I got all the plugins known, known to man. Sure. But, um, but I don't use it all, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, um, can't, can't. But sometimes I'll stop and, you know, and I'll investigate some stuff. Let me see what this does. And mm-hmm. it's fun doing, doing mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I have some go, go-to stuff. Yeah, because if it doesn't... If it doesn't help your process, it's just mm-hmm. superfluous. It's like yeah, yeah. it's just I just got extra. And now nowadays, ev- everything is like this. Yeah, you gotta go. You know, so sometimes you don't have the luxury to sit back and go, okay, let me try this one and this right. one. Right. I don't know how people do it. Yeah, but even though I, I don't have a template, but you, you just can't get through the right. plethora of all that stuff. It's right, right, right. Impossible. It's too much. It comes yeah. at you all the do, time. Uh, do you do you stay in the box some or? or uh, yeah, I'm like 95 percent in the in the box. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, yeah. so give me some give me some favorite plugins. Ah, okay. Um, I always got to start with the with the waves S- SSL and mm-hmm. the UA yeah. SSL. So S- SSL is always my first go go to. Yeah, same here. Mm-hmm. And then the, the you know the LA two A. Yeah. You know those things that we always used in in, in the studio. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, yeah. The API EQs. The. Uh, uh you know. Um, uh, I I love my diver. For some me reason, too. I just love diver. I me love too. messing with that diver. Me man. too. You me can too. you can do some amazing things with that diver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. The, the older one had that modulation at the end of the tail. Yeah. That's the only thing I miss about right, it. Right, right. They, they changed that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people use that a lot. Yeah, they do. That's that's a secret weapon. Yeah, you know? I think so yeah. too. I learned to use it and love it from Mike Dean. Mike uses it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that that yeah. pre delay is the is the secret. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Secrets, guys. Yeah. Write the shit down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the is does this world enter into your world because 
it's hard now to have a conversation that doesn't talk about streaming, gaming, metaverse, web point three, where audio is going to be, if not equally important, maybe more important than some other things. You can't have any of those without having an oral A U R A L experience. Do you are you hit with projects that are mixes that are going to go in those kind of specific areas? Is that coming or I'm sorry, as far as streaming? So yeah, so they're streaming and gaming and metaverse and web 3.0. Mm-hmm. Are you getting any of those kind of mixes? Not, not specific. I, I don't really know when my mixes go into gaming. I'm sure some stuff I do sure. goes to gaming after it goes to the streaming wars and all that. Sure. Um, but I guess I'm not deep enough into the gaming world to know what my. I mean, back in the day, I would hear, I, I would see that um, I, I'd had a had a song of mine, right. maybe an Outcast song was inside this right. video game or something. Right. But it's hard to keep up specific. with all that stuff. Yeah. Oh specific. man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm watching yeah. a facility that's trying to mm-hmm. make the facility so that it can encompass everything necessary. And they spent a ton of money. And then we had somebody from Netflix come through. I had somebody from Netflix come through. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you got to make this change, this change, this change, this change, this change. All super expensive mm-hmm. in order to compete at this level mm-hmm. and the set and the other. And so... Mm-hmm what the requirements that are now going on the facilities and then people who can come in and use those facilities have to know that, oh, okay, we have how 36 speakers here, we're doing 11.1 and mm-hmm. we're going to... It's fascinating where it's going in that it makes what you guys do and what we do for a living even more important. Mm-hmm. The economic model's changing, yeah. the mm-hmm. opportunity's changing, but it all starts with you being able to have the fundamentals of mixing a song yeah, right. and then it goes to the you know to the next level so are you working on atmos um i've, I've done a few things in uh, at, atmos because i'm still figuring out mono yeah i'm yeah you're right I'm, <laughs> yeah I, i've there's there's i'm one one point oh yeah I'm, you know so it's uh it's something that i haven't delved into really um because i'm so busy in, in stereo uh-huh. you know but there's been um a couple of projects where i've done it and i've i had fun doing it but yeah. it's but um, I, I've just been so busy. It's hard to mm-hmm. do it. You know, hard to have fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The um, the spatial audio, atmos in cars, like you know, it, it's it's yeah, more of what I was talking about it's before. Deeper now, the, yeah. yeah, this this movement in the audio space where you know, mm-hmm. there was a time certainly when we started the show and before that where, you know, we were, you guys were secret selected people. Go to him because he can do this. Go mm-hmm. to, and nobody knew. Now it's like, where can we find the talent that can do this? It's really, yeah. really, it's, right. it's yeah. changed a lot, which yeah. is which is a testament to you guys and to the fact mm-hmm. that, you know, being good at this is not just defined by a hit record. Right. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's your creativity and thinking out of the box, your mm-hmm. consistency with sharing in terms of education stuff, the technological mm-hmm. advances. So mm-hmm. it's a fascinating space for all the you know our audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're in something that used to be kind of niche and nerdy, mm-hmm. and now it's like critical yeah. <laughs> in lots of different places. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, cheat. Mm-hmm. I get this question a lot. How loud? How many less do you deliver your uh, mixes to mastering? Oh man, it can. I'm. I don't really look specific, at it. So I don't know yeah, myself. I don't really look at it. Really, it's hard for me to. You know, a lot of guys. Not a lot of guys. I know some guys. They look at their meters to see. You know, yeah. if they're too loud. But sometimes it's hard for me to focus on that and really be be creative. Mm-hmm. You know, so. I think there are some instances where I can be loud and, you know, I'm, I'm working on, on this, this, this Andy Shaw, uh, album right now and I find myself not as loud. I'm like, wow. But because the music is not really, uh, yeah, it's like a little yeah, folky pop yeah. stuff. So, mm-hmm. but with that, I find my levels a little really, really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, 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 I just, I can't, I'm like you. If mm-hmm. I if I if I take time to think, I'm gone. Yeah. Uh, thinking is the worst thing you can do right. as a mix engineer. You know, because we come from the era like, it, yeah, it's in red, but how does it sound? Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. How does it sound? Mm-hmm. If it's not distorting, then you're yeah. good. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, you can't dedicate your life right. to meters. No, no. Mm-hmm. People looking at it's, 
especially with Pro Tools, looking at colors with the green, oh, it's going into the yellow, oh, it's in the orange, no, oh, the red, no, oh, and then, no, then it's a fire alarm. No. But you know what I mean? So I don't, no. I don't think about it. And, yeah. and that's, it's interesting to just, because that's overthinking yeah. things from a technological standpoint. Yeah. Like, in just trying to super serve, you go right. past the point. Right. I think it's, I think technology should still require you to mm. bring yourself to it. Right. As yeah. opposed to saying, yeah. oh, just go fly the plane and I'll press mm -hmm. go. Yeah. And then, yeah. Um, Some people freak out just to see the waveform looks hot. And I'm like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Really? It's not that deep. How does, <coughs> how does it sound to you? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, people people are people listen with their eyes now, and that's that's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. That's you know? a really good way to put it. That's they a really, really good way to put it. Are you optimistic about where it's going? The kind of projects like I see this this and not a rebirth, but there's um, the artistry that's coming through is really interesting, and mm. and there are people that are fearless and trying things and yeah. jamming genres together and coming up with new stuff. Yeah. How how do you see it? I, I like you know it's. I see a lot of artists really focusing on being soulful, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I think that's that's really great because we need that back. Uh -huh. Some soulful stuff, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, and I, I feel as though we're getting back to live instrumentation yeah. again, which yeah. is that human yeah. feel. I agree. Because we got that. so yeah. we got so so mechanical, mm -hmm. you know, that we just, we kind of lost our, ourselves there yeah. for a minute, you yeah. know. Yeah. So now that we're getting back to the human feel, I think that's great. It's it's interesting. I would I would recommend everybody to watch Summer of Soul. Yeah, most definitely. And just if you want that to just see, how, you, yeah. oh my God, will that ever inspire you? Mm -hmm. For absolutely sure. Yeah. Now the other inspiring thing is Batter's Box, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <clears throat> and you know he's. <laughs> oh, you're doing it with swagger this time. Okay, cool. Now remember, we got friendships here. Oh, damn. Like I might have to break this like up. <laughs> security, like security. Johnny Carson. <laughs> got the Johnny Carson card. You know? Exactly. Get up there. Get up there. I'm All right. it up there. We've set it up. It's the NBA playoffs, and uh, we got a little edge here. So, yeah. Dave, T well, and I've known him so long. I think I'm going to win this one. Okay. I, I think I'm okay. going to get into him psychologically. I'm going to oh, get out of the way. Good. This could be a massacre. Okay. Uh, loops. Loops? Yep. Okay, well, how do uh, you play this game again? So just give me a, a, a short one-word answer. Word answer oh, 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 you feel and then, and then okay. We'll, we'll go back okay. and, and talk about some of the okay. things. So, so loops. Loops, uh, masterful. Okay. Delays. Creative. Limiting. Dangerous. Mm. Major or minor key. Interesting. Reverb. Be careful. <laughs> Virtual synthesizers. Love. <laughs> the most annoying frequencies you run into. 12K. <laughs> 808s. Overdone. Uh, you get you get a bonus because I, I had SSL down, so I'll, <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you I'll skip that and we'll we'll give you a, a a point for that. Melodies needed. If you were on a desert island, what one piece of gear would you like to have? Assuming there was a lots of electricity and you had a way to play it. <laughs> 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 maybe maybe I should say. Uh, I, I need to modify that, but yeah. One piece of equipment? Yeah, or or plug in or whatever. I would say since we need sound, uh, I just just give me a a bongo, I guess. Something to play. <laughs> <laughs> See? Something to play. Yeah. See, it was yeah. a, it was an artful. Yeah. It's exactly what you'd expect. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good or bad? Bad. Oh no. No, that's good. I, I, I lost again. Okay. But, but bongo uh, may be the most original answer we've uh, had no. to that question for, uh, no. for sure. Um, Here you can remember me with that one. Love oh, that. God. Love it. You got to sign this for me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That'll be worth exactly. Where's, where's the pen? You got to sign exactly it. <laughs> three cents in crypto in about twenty years. Yeah, so. yeah. that's, gonna that's be good. My, that's gonna really be my, good. my NFT. You got to sign. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the 
the the the thing that is is so good that I hope our audience can take away from this is that you can be yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can be yourself and and bring yourself to it. You can educate yourself. Um, you don't have to buy into the whole orthodoxy of how you need to prepare to yeah. to do whatever. And mm -hmm. and that I think in some simple ways, don't forget your ears and don't forget your gut and don't mm -hmm. forget yeah. your emotions. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. I mean that's that's still key. Melody yeah, is absolutely. key. Loving a song. Yeah. Sometimes if mistakes if, if are if the best. If a song doesn't thing. make you feel something, some yeah. something's wrong. I yeah. mean, I always tell people, I'll see with this. your ears. I, my, you can ask my assistants. I'm, I'm not proud of this, but it's not hard to, for a song to make me cry. No, you know? right. I mean, uh, uh, and I you, try and, not to cry. But, and there's nothing wrong, there's nothing to not be proud of. That, no. That's a good thing. Yeah. But what I'm saying, those those are the records that, that, that I wish I could do, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I've done a few of those, but boy, they're hard to get, you yeah, know? They are, they are hard to get, really are. But Neil said something that I, that I don't want to let go by. He just said earlier, he said, see with your ears. And I think that is an amazing thing. Yeah, to, that, uh, yeah that's, true. Right? that's true. Right? I yeah. mean, that's that's an amazing way to look at it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Neil Pogue, we love you, man. Thank you, man. It's uh, good to be amongst friends. Thank it you. It is absolutely good. Me. And it's always inspiring and educating and yeah. educational and, you know, to just continue to think about how long we've known each other. Right, right. And, you know, we didn't go through Neil's whole history, but when you go back to Atlanta, early stuff and Outkast and, and TLC, just... Amazing records and still today, mm -hmm. cutting edge, Tyler the Creator, A Wall Nation, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Just amazing. Working on harm and stuff. Yeah. And can continue to work on harm and stuff, which is where we're coming to you. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>